Welcome back to another video and today we will be talking about the newest makeup releases and announcements that have been made. Another week and another makeup news video. So I think today this will be a bit more shorter because the last one that I do and I do this every other week that was a bit longer one because I filmed that later than I usually film this but because we are now back on the normal filming schedule of filming things on Sundays uh, so I think there's not been that much, much time passed from the previous one so that is the reason we are maybe having less releases however what is a bit concerning is that there's even though there seems to be less of releases to talk about I there's quite a lot of them that I want to buy so my drawers and uh, my wallets are probably gonna cry but let's discuss some of the newest announcements and first let's uh, talk about something that again this was like I think quite shortly released after I sort of ended filming my last uh, makeup news video but this is Pat McGrath and uh, she is doing a shade extension to her stick blushes. I think she came up with came up with the stick blushes somewhere around the end of last year and now there are four new shades and uh, I haven't, uh, first of all, I haven't bought this because I feel that the packaging, based on the reviews and how I've seen it looking, it doesn't exactly scream Pat McGrath in terms of how much the sticks cost. These aren't, I think, the most expensive uh, thing Pat McGrath has on her website, but still, I this is like, it just doesn't like, uh, a lot of people have made the comparison to like color pop, uh, blush sticks, and uh, it, I don't think it's like completely wrong when you compare the packaging of two, but oh well. Uh, I'm looking at the shades, like I think there's quite fun, there are clearly a few like a deeper, new, a new, deeper more neutral shades which is good for especially people with uh, tan to dark skin tones and then we have a couple of more brighter shades. I do say that the Divine, Divine Rose Glow which, which is a very bright pink, I think this is quite a brave color for a luxury brand to come out with when we usually think about the sort of blush shades that luxury brands uh, release. Uh, I think these are already available on Pat McGrath's website. These are no for me. I, do, I have not been keen to buy these sort of stick blushes because for me these look the kind of formula that might not dry down completely and I don't want my hair to get in these. But um, if you like this formula and the original shades and you want to buy new ones, these are now, now an option for you. Then let's go to some more high-end cheek products and Chanel. So Chanel has come out with uh, the Le Beige Healthy Glow Sun Kissed Powders. So I think there are quite... I have seen like four, four shades I have seen on quite a lot of websites. So I, however, I do think there might be a couple of more that uh, maybe have been just uh, sort of shown in stores or something. But uh, I'm looking at the trend moods image of these and I think that there's the one very there's the really deep one that actually has quite nice uh, like sort of moreish looking shades and then there are the more fair tone and medium tone ones that have the sort of more curly blush and then the highlighter and a bronzer so uh, I believe Sophia C's Beauty already has a review of these she bought four of the sh shades and I think that's actually quite a good video to like look through and see that if this is the kind of product that you maybe want to invest in these are like horrendously expensive the product is really big and you do get like three products in one but still I have never been a fan of these sort of combined uh, powder products where you have within the same compact all the powders because I, then I'm like thinking that well they are gonna mix in because these basically have a blush shade on the bottom then the middle there's a big bronzer shade and then I think in the upper corner that you have the highlighter so um, for me this is just not the kind of like um, we all know that I did find my love for Chanel at the end of last year however this is not a Chanel product that I am particularly interested in but if you have liked these Chanel powders, uh, Chanel's cheek products generally, and this is the kind of like easy one and done product, for example, that you just want to have in your purse, then this could be a good option. Just be aware that these do cost quite a lot. Uh, next, I think I will be going through both of the Hourglass releases. So this is a bit strange. Uh, Hourglass has released two, like uh, actually there's all together three. There are three different ambient powder, and this is truly something that Hourglass is at this point. Like they, uh, let's go to the powders. So the first one is, uh, this is uh, uh, because usually I think the powder powders they released, there are six shades, now this only has, first one has only four. So this is the ambient lighting powder, golden rose edit, and I do think this might be more suited for like medium and tan deep skin tones, at least based on the images that I'm seeing from the shades. Uh, I'm not gonna say that are these all repeat shades. Hourglass is notoriously known for putting, putting repeat shades, and especially because I do know people collect these. 
you might want to check that are these actual shades that you have in your like previous previous face palettes. Uh, for me, it's just that these are like I really wish that our class would like start coming up with something new. I mean, I guess these must sell because they come out with, but. Um, if you are in the market for this, when is this? This is apparently limited edition, but when is this coming out? Eh. Oh, it's already available. So at least Telvage sells these, and I think maybe other also retailers that do sell the brand might get this soon. 77 US dollars. I think for that price, actually, yeah, wait. Um, so the quad, is, uh, quad of these shades is 77 dollars, but now actually let's go to the Big one because there are two more and face palettes and these are in the traditional six, six shade format and uh, actually this one doesn't even have the winner. These going to be available. This is just what's coming soon. But I assume because I think the big big six powder palettes have been like around ton, almost like they are now I think hundred euros or something. So yeah, that's expensive. But if you compare that for the four shades, those are like seventy seven US dollars. If you really want this sort of big hourglass face palette, then I would actually maybe steer you to just check that uh, will you get more more like value for money by buying the six shade one because I think for like a quarter four face powders, if the if it's more like sensible to maybe like just save a bit more money and spend money on the these ones. But again, I'm looking at these like one of these I think is obviously more sort of an uh, contouring shading palette because it actually doesn't have any blush shades just the highlighter and some bronzing shades and then the other one that I'm looking at is the more traditional where there's like a bronzer shade then there are blushes and then they have the finishing powder and I think maybe one highlighting shade but as I said with this one and the release uh, that was the quad that I showed earlier please check that if you are an hourglass collector do you already have this but yeah um, this is just something that the brand is gonna beat to death because these, I mean, they have come out with these so many times that the palettes are even like starting to look the same. But yeah, those were the sort of um, luxury uh, face products. There will be more later, but those are the ones for the, now. Then let's get to Urban Decay. So Urban Decay has released a new edition of their sort of setting spray. So this is the All Nighter Hyaluronic Acid Dewy Setting Spray. So the original All Nighter, which I do know is a setting spray that a lot of people uh, praise, uh, praise on for being it able to keep your makeup like sticking all day long and it's also a setting spray that I have tried in a mini once and I think it's quite, yeah, I think for longevity it's actually a decent setting spray. Uh, so this one obviously because it's a dewy setting spray so I think this is more meant to like make your face look plumper and hydrated but are they actually promising that should this? Uh, uh, apparently it's a waterproof fixing mist that gives a luminous glow and a finish. So it is said that the iconic long bar formula keeps makeup looking fresh for 16 hours. Now that's actually interesting because usually if a setting spray is advertised as dewy then it necessarily doesn't advertise it as making makeup last long but this apparently is meant to be something that also makes your, your makeup stick low for a long time. I'd be very curious to see maybe a comparison review between this and the original All Nighter to see that or the Claims really true. Now when is this coming out? It's apparently already available on Ulta's website. So if you're in States, you're able to get this with other countries. Like I said, here in Europe, at least in my country, the Urban Decay retail situation is a bit, bit odd because we don't have these super big counters anymore. We only have like these really small, small shelves in like our uh, department stores and for example as I said I don't think we will be getting for example the new uh, foundation that they released recently because I you would need quite a lot of space for the different shades so however we do have the setting spray in those shelves so I'd be, cur I'd be curious to see if this is actually something that would also come to come to our market. Then a Kiko release and I was yeah, actually waiting that when is Kiko gonna come out with their next launch because it has been quite unusually. I think Kiko is not a brand that launches like every week but they do, I think they do launch like once a month I think is their average phase. So Kiko is um, collaborating with Bridgerton which is a very popular series on Netflix. I haven't watched the series because I like my historical dramas to be somehow accurate and the Bridgerton like I'm not like if you like the series I have heard that it's a good like light entertainment if you like your romance series is and that sort of but because I like if it's a historical series I would like to be I would like it to be like um, a bit more accurate than not just about the, like the personal dramas but yeah that about that uh, about this one uh, 
this isn't actually that big of a Kiko collection. I was actually surprised that it was this only really small, but I actually checked. This is already available on Kiko's website. And this truly is everything, which, yeah, it's a lot, but I don't think this is actually a lot for Kiko, because usually then they come out, aside from the makeup, there are usually like skincare stuff to go with it, but now we only have makeup. Uh, I do actually like the packaging, it is like, uh, I think I like this a bit more than the Pat McGrath version, because I do think it's a bit more sophisticated. However, the products, I checked these out and made the conclusion that um, I'm not interested in none of these. The quads are quite dull, they were also quite expensive, they were like almost... They were like over 20 euro, euros and while Kiko's eyeshadow formula is good, you can get more shades in Kiko palettes with that same price from their like baseline products. Also the lip products and the cheek products, like it's a pretty samey what we have seen from the brand before. So this is a skip for me, but if you're a Bridgerton and Kiko fan, then this is something that's already available on their own website. And now I think this is the most exciting thing for me and this is something that I was thinking because I know New Monolith Shop would have their next launch at May, I think they will soon announce the date. And I was thinking that year there were some good indie palettes coming to the next launch, they had like a sneak peek for some of the launches, but I was thinking that there isn't really, really anything that I want to buy, but apparently this is coming to that and I'm very excited. So Adept has come out with a collaboration with Amy Loves Makeup and uh, when I saw the first images of this, I was like, that did, did they just like somehow guess what would be like my comfort palette? So this is a neutral palette with pinks, and then there is a face palette with pink and a uh, pink shade um, highlighters and blushes, and on top of it all, both the eyeshadow palette and the highlight, the sort of face quad, they are in glitter packaging. And uh, ten-year-old me is very excited right now because this is like the makeup collection of collection of my dreams. I do say that like um, when I'm looking at the face palette, the eyeshadow palette, there are few pops of blues. So so I think if I would be making a palette, the pops of colors would be different for me because we do all know that blue isn't my part. It's primarily like um, primary favorite eyeshadow shade, but I do actually think that the blues for this sort of cool toned pink collection, these are very nice pops of colors to put in. And uh, as I said also with the face palette, very beautiful shades. Um, my face palette, face product drawer is probably gonna scream because this is certainly not the last face product that I want to buy. My eyeshadow, pa eyeshadow palette drawers are actually doing quite fine because uh, this is like currently, I think, um, I'm not gonna say is this the like the only palette in the video that I am really wanting to buy, but uh, anyway, like the eyeshadow, the list of eyeshadow palettes that I want to buy is quite like I think aside from this, there's only a couple of others. However, in terms of face palettes, my to buy list is getting very very big and we all know that I have limited space for my makeup so my drawers are gonna scream help. Uh, this is gonna be available on Adept's own website on 1st of May so I'm filming this on Sunday so this couple of ways away couple of days away. However for the European buyers this will become available. This is already actually up already on Monolith Shop's website so Monolith Shop will be stocking this on their next launch. So if you don't want to go through the hassling of shipping this from the States and paying the extra like custom related fees and import fees, then wait for the Monolith launch, check when they have the launch date and be on the website because I think this is going to be one of those Monolith launches that it's going to sell out on launch and I will certainly be putting my alarms on when this comes out because this is just, this is perfection, this is beautiful and I want even the face palette, which yeah, it's not the first and the last, but last thing on, but the eyeshadow palettes do too beautiful ones, it's very, very much. And uh, there's already quite a lot of, I think, creators who receive this in PR, so you are able to kind of see this on YouTube and make the conclusion do you want to buy it. So Fenty is coming out. Actually, we have two Fenty releases in this video also. The second one is more of a sneak peek, but you, I will show it after this one because this is now officially announced. announced. So uh, Fenty launched Soft Lift Natural Luminous Foundation. I believe this is meant to replace a luminous finish foundation that they had before in their line. However, I don't. Uh, there might have been that that didn't sell well or the formula didn't work out for a lot of people. So they just um, binned it and made it, uh, like reformulated it. Uh, Fifty Shades Fenty, Fenty is pretty good at making like uh, with their shade ranges. Uh, this is launching on the. This has already launched, and I actually already saw this even available to buy at least online, even on some of our Fenty retailers. So Fenty has been quite good at making this already like available to a lot of their re like retailers, which is a good thing. Um, I could be tempted to try this out because I have been now on a journey of trying out more. Also luminous finish foundation because I am in my 30s and the very heavy matte kind of foundations just aren't 
they don't work out as well as they used to. So I'm trying to find the right balance of having a bit of a luminous foundation, but still something that will work for like, like a combo-oiling skin. But yeah, uh, all shades and uh, this will be, as I said, this is already like launched and available. Another eyeshadow palette, so uh, DD Signature released the coffee-themed eyeshadow palette. Uh, I believe this was a brand that was having a hiatus for a second and now they have been like slowly launching stuff again. And uh, I think this is an okay palette, like it's a nice neutral palette with some pops of colors and there is like a four, four shades of, shades of shimmer, shimmer and the rest are mattes. Um, not something that uh, as a color story I'm particularly interested in, but um, if you like the brand and like this color story, then is this already? Uh, this is also also launching on 1st of May, and this is actually will be retailing for 34 US dollars. So especially for someone buying this from within the US, this is actually quite an affordable, affordable indie, pal indie palette to buy. But yeah, as I said, will be coming out soon. Then when I mentioned that my cheek product, cheek drawers are crying, crying, and now we will start seeing the product. So P. Louise has announced a new cheek uh, powder blush and uh, news flash. I flash. I still. I think I discussed this in one of my previous videos when I was ranking my eyeshadow palettes. Was it my eyeshadow palettes or no? I think it was my last makeup news video. Yes, I haven't still received my P. Louise order. It's still like um. I should hopefully be getting it next week, but I will film a separate video of uh, unboxing the order and telling the horrendous experience that I've been having with them, which is strange because the first time I have ordered from the brand, which was last year, it I didn't have any this kind of these issues. But yeah, uh, but let's get back to the like we will talk about that more later. But about this one, so these are powder blushes, and uh, I think powder blushes uh, were were kind of maybe a little bit in like in 2017, 2016 when a lot of mineral themed makeup was in, and in related to that, these sort of loose powder products were in trend. I remember having one loose like uh, powder blush in my collection. However, I decluttered that quite quickly because I found it that it was very patchy and difficult to get even, and the shade was nice, it was this sort of very neutral burnt orange shade, but yeah, uh, it wasn't a good experience. So when Pilo is announced it, I was like thinking, thinking kind of like uh, that, yeah, I think there was a reason why this sort of powder, loose powder blush uh, format didn't, hasn't been popular. However, then I looked at how they are like advertising is though, just, so just like their sort of like uh, liquid cheek products. This has a puff at the end and I have now seen a few of demonstrations of using this on their sort of Instagram reels. And this is actually something quite interesting that I would be willing to buy to see that does this actually really work in the way that they are promoting it. So because this has a puff, so apparently the puff here is just like with the cheek product, like liquid cheek products meant to work as kind of an like a buffer. So it's meant to like meant to like help this to uh, spread on your cheeks easily and not have this like powder blush going like all over all over your face and a sort of table and everything and uh, so for that reason i'd be quite curious to try this the shades are going along the same lines of shades that they have in their liquid cheek blushes so just so if you're thinking of shade comparisons but yeah uh, as I said, I'd be curious to, like, I could take one, sort of one for the team and try one of these out and see that do they actually apply as evenly with the puff being, like, in between the sort of loose powder and your skin and uh, how is the, like, user experience. But um, these are already available on P. Lewis's website and uh, I will be getting back, to, but I won't be making any more <laughs> orders before I get my, get my previous order, which has been, like, it's been almost like a next week. I think if, if I if I don't receive it in next week, the week after that, it will be like a month when I made the order. But yeah, we will get back to that customer experience later. So another cheap product that I'd be curious to I'm very curious to try, try is that Lancome has announced new bronzers and highlighters. And uh, Lancome is definitely for me one of those like mom brands. So this is a brand that my mother has like used a lot, and there are a lot of like and I for example know a lot of like. A lot of like sort of a lot of women who like only like buy this rebuy the same makeup products again. For example, one of their hypnose mascaras I think is something that at least in my friend circle, because my I, my friends almost all are the type of people that just want something quick for everyday makeup. Like the hypnose mascara is a cult favorite. And I think with Lancome also, they're like eyeshadow queens are, or are those queens? Yeah, they're queens because I think there's five shades. And so the eyeshadow queens are also something that like a lot of everyday makeup users who want to spend a bit more money 
buy them and their foundations are also quite like I think popular products and we all know that, for example the Tiny Doe foundation that I tried I actually like the formula a lot but regarding about these products like um, I want the highlighter and I want one of the bronzers and uh, because it's a long comb these are probably gonna be like hugely expensive so uh, considering my track record of having bought uh, two very expensive highlighters during the month of April uh, I think if these become available in my country during May, we will be having a bit of an... We will have to do some budgeting decisions because, yeah. Um, when are these gonna be available? Uh, it doesn't say yet when these are gonna be available, so I assume these will start trickling in soon. Lancome is one of those brands that... Uh, sometimes they release stuff first here in Europe and sometimes some stuff come first, comes first to state so we will have to see will this show up in the US or in European retailers first. Uh, about the bronzers I would say these look more red leaning however I will be curious to see that is this more of an image edit thing because with the NYX, NYX butter bronzers there was also the fact that they looked quite pink and reddish leaning but actually when people started seeing these those in real life in store actually only a couple of few like darker shade were actually like redder leaning and actually most of the shades were like normal normal like bro neutral leaning bronzers so I'd be curious to also see that are these actually as reddish looking in real life as they are in the pictures the highlighters uh, I think obviously the fairest, fairest like champagne shade is probably the one that I would be buying. But yeah, uh, I want one shade of the bronzer and one shade of the highlighter, and these are probably gonna be very costly. Uh, next, a brand that's uh, sort of new to me, but I thought this looked uh, quite uh, pretty, but not something that I am buying. So this is Dennis Beauty, and this is a new, new to me indie brand, and uh, I just wanted to show you this because um, I thought that the shimmers in this palette looked like very pretty. However. In terms of depth, uh, I do believe this is advertised as a bridal, like I think the palette is called even bridal. Yeah, bridal eyeshadow palette. So uh, I do think that like this looks very bridal in terms of the shimmers and even some of the like neutral shades. However, what is actually like not so why I would still not be like too curious to buy this is that this is like in bit of depth. So I think they would have done better if they would have added like a few more like deepening up shade because the only like very deep shade here I think is the brown in the upper corner and the brown is also I think more of a mid-tone even in the mid-tone realm so yeah but uh, the shimmers in this looks really pretty but I've never tried this brand so would be curious that if you have tried them how or what's the brand like because the shimmers in this like based on at least uh, videos that I saw they look like very, very beautiful and um, then some cheek, more cheek, oh actually this is a complexion product. So Natasha Denona came out with a powder foundation and uh, I have actually been waiting that when is she gonna lie because she redid her concealer. As I said, the new High Glam concealer is one of the best concealers I think I've tried recently. Uh, the original Natasha Denona concealer that I tried was quite horrendous. It was like very hard to work with, very dry looking and just... Yeah. And uh, I think she has had a matte foundation and I think that with that one also she has been doing a lot of just discontinuing it. So I was kind of waiting that... I was actually expecting when she started thinking this that are we now going to finally get the reformulated like liquid foundation. But no, we got a bit got a powder one. I'm not a powder foundation kind of a girl. I need my foundations to have some courage and with powder foundations uh, those are just not the format that I'm thinking right now that are suit like my preferences but um, this has quite a uh, like this has uh, I think quite a decent shade decent shade range and I think that another Sudinona posted something about like along her lines in the Instagram where she had the like shades matched to her concealer so if you're a certain sh shade in the concealer you can then like look at the match with the powder foundation but um when how much is this 55 US dollars that's quite a lot for uh, if you're like Okay, uh, 55 US dollars for like, it's not horrendously like, it's expensive, but it's not the highest pricing high-end foundation. However, considering that if you are truly using powder foundation as your foundation, meaning that you have to wipe quite a thick layer of the product to get it to your skin for it to have courage, then I do think that you will run out of this quite quickly. So if you're using this only as a finishing, sp finishing powder, then like, it will last obviously longer in your use, but if you're truly using this as like a foundation product, I do think for 55 US dollars you might run out of this quite quite quickly. Uh, the product is already available, you can find it on the Shady Nona's own website. Then another cheek product that my cheek product is 
pro cheap product drawer is probably gonna say that why are you doing this to me so nyx has announced we actually discussed this already on my previous makeup news video when we have sneak peek one of the shades now we have all the shades so Next continues with the butter team, so these are their butter blushes, and can I say we still haven't gotten the bronzers in our store, like I'm... I do know that next stuff can, can be slow, but like we have, I think it's been like now quite a long time from when they've become available at US, but we still haven't, I'm still like waiting for the bronzers, and I think we will, that means I will have to wait for the blushes, but um... These look nice, there are some nice, <laughs> nice shades, there are especially a few cool toned pink shades here that I'm looking at and thinking that that would be great and then I'm th then all my other cool toned pink blushes are probably thinking like why are you buying more when you have, when you don't even use us? Like I do say this is a very like, there are like more wearable shades than there are more sort of fun fun bright shades and I do think the shade gradient, there are lighter shades and then there are very deep shades. So the shade range is very beautiful and I think I would have like quite a hard time picking and choosing which ones I want to which ones I want to buy. But uh, these are again already available in the uh, US so you are at least I think able to buy these on Nuxus own website. Uh, but as I said, we still in, I at least in my country, I haven't seen the next bronzer. So for us Europeans, I think you better be prepared to wait also for the blushes, but these are very, very pretty shades. Then let's get to some Moira. So Moira has come out with the Dream Light Highlighting Balm. So I think Moira's like their powder highlighters that they released some time ago. Those actually were quite popular and uh, those are actually something that you can, if you're in Europe, you can buy Moira on Boozy Shop, which is a retailer. I would recommend buying them from if you, if you live in you. Uh, highlighting balm is not something I would be interested in. There are two shades. There's a very like bright uh, white shade and then there's this sort of more deeper looking shade. But this is a balm product. So with the highlighting balm, I'd be at least, as a someone who has a more oily leaning skin, I'd be pretty afraid that is this gonna like lift all my makeup and just look crazy on me. So uh, if you have tried this, then do give your feedback. Because for me, this isn't something that looks like some, for me, this feels like a product that I wouldn't by, but I'd be interested to hear out if someone has tried this, that how did it work. But yeah, uh, only two shades available, at least based on the image that I'm seeing. Uh, then Jolie Beauty, which is a brand that also is at least here in Europe, sold in through Monolith Shop, but also you can buy them on their own website. They have come out with a new collection and this is... Uh, the palette is called Till Death Palette, so I assume this is the theme of also the also the like collection, so this is kind of like an uh, horror romance, I think would be the correct terms for this. Uh, the palette is actually quite nice looking, it's more like a cool toned neutral leaning. However, I'm Jubilee Beauty is one of those brands that I have not been attracted to because all of their palettes are pretty big. So yes, I do have some big palettes in my collection, but I do try to avoid buying too many of them because they take up space and with big palettes especially I do notice that then there are all like certain shades that I gravitate towards and I don't get like my full, full use out of them. But the palette is looking as I said very nice cool down looking uh, neutral palette and then there seems to be some liquid lipsticks and they we, then there is some liquid metal eyeshadows also included. Uh, the lip sh lipstick shades are definitely more on the grungier, sh grungier side, so if you are like eyeing these, there is like a sort of grey greenish leaning and even a blue, which is blue lipstick is quite quite of an interesting shade choice, but there are also like a few more like um, grey leaning neutral ones, like if you don't want to go the blue or grey green route. Uh, when is this going to be? Um, this is already available on Jolie Beauty's website and uh, if you're interested in this and you live in Europe, um, wait and see if Monolith Shop is going to announce that they will be stocking this because then it's probably a bit easier for you to get. Uh, the hand mirror is actually quite nice. I like the image, like this sort of gothic crunch imagery that's uh, put, uh, put back off it. So that's something that I'd be interested in. But yeah, I don't think I will be like buying anything from this even if it would come up, become available on Monolith Shop. Then we are getting to the sort of last releases. So this is more of an, I think, really, really re-release. So Give Me Glow Cosmetics has actually like uh, re-released some of their, two of their like popular palettes, and these are only in a smaller format. So I think previous, previously Give Me Glow Cosmetics was known for doing these very like huge pants. And that's the reason, for example, that I have never bought anything from the brand. But now they have released their sort of vintage rose and Christmas morning palettes in a much more like nicer, smaller format. 
and uh, these are also now like 28 US dollars so these are also now like they are a bit less expensive than what they were when they were still doing the bigger, bigger bands. Uh, I'm just trying to see that have they reformulated these. <laughs> It says that these are like newly upda updated, but it doesn't... So they say that them, they have the matte formula has been changed, so it's, it is supposed to blend better, but the shimmers apparently are apparently the same as they are. So yes, they have also, aside from like updating the packaging and making the pants smaller, they have also like updated the matte formula, which I do think that is nice that in the... Uh, indie brands are focusing also doing their sort of matte, matte shades also better and not just focusing on the shimmers. But yeah, these will be available... Or are these already? Uh, for the third of May. So these are also going to be launching in the upcoming week. So I think maybe if you have the original palettes of these, then maybe you don't need to rebuy these, even though the formula is a bit different. But I think for like people who like the brand but previously thought that they don't want to commit to the big big pants, then these could actually be much more much more of a better option. And I do have to say the vintage rose has quite of a nice color story uh, story. So this could be maybe something if they would come to Monolith shop with these, then could be interested to buy try out these in a much more like smaller smaller format. Okay, this was the second Fenty release. I was supposed to talk about this after the foundation, but um, my thoughts seem to run away. But yeah, uh, this was an, so Angel Naked has uh, released these images, so I assume these aren't officially announced yet. So these have been another kind of leaked. So uh, Fenty is coming out with powder blushes. I did actually see like someone hinting at these in the. I was looking at the for makeup forum post or something where, where someone was saying that Fenty is coming out with powder blushes this summer and now we actually have seen that it's true. And I don't know it, are these all of the shades, however I do say that um, some of the more wish uh, there seems to be like two types of formula within this so there seems to be some shades that are only in matte formula and then there seems to be a few shades that have the sort of more shimmery formula. Uh, I do think the purple, some of the more purple Maori shades are actually looking quite interesting and something that I'd be interested to try out. Um, I have no idea when these are going to be available. Uh, I think when Angel Naked was the first one that also got the pictures from the highlighters, it did take some months for the highlighters to be actually unofficially announced. However, if it has been hinted for a lot that these would come out to summer market, then Maybe with these blushes it won't take that long for them to actually come out to the market. But um, as I said, Fenty hasn't officially yet uh, announced these and I think this might have been spotted. I don't know, is this a retailer from a retailer who's gotten this early or someone who's gotten this in PR, but yeah. Uh, but I do have to say that the shade ranges and some of the shades are looking pretty interested and very curious to see, like, because the sparkly formula, like, is it... Is it like very sort of like rare beauty style sparkly or is it more subtle sheen? But I uh, would I would like be I will probably buy when the when this will officially be available at this one of the matte shades. Yeah, I think we're at the end. So because as I said, the last of these videos I filmed it kinda and I did it kinda late from my usual schedule, so not so many releases, but this is the last release from Beauty Bay. So Beauty Bay came out with a sort of a lip tint, so uh, these are the sort of, I think they did these, these quite, a, quite a lot, so uh, these are all like, um, I looked at the shades and these are all like very sort of brownish neutral leaning shades, which, which I do think is something a bit different, uh, considering that usually the lip tints that we see, because uh, lip tints are the sort of Korean, Asian makeup inspired makeup items, so usually they are in red, either reddish or these more sort of a pinkish shades, but these are definitely like I'd say 90s inspired like brown, brown tone shades. Uh, aside from these, they also came out with gel lip liners to sort of match the four like uh, uh, lip tint shades. So these are supposed to be apparently hydrating but still leave a sort of tint behind. And because these are skin tint, uh, as I said, they're meant to leave tint, tint behind. So I assume it's quite similar to some of the other lip tints that I've been trying out where the gloss layer, it sort of wears away when you eat and drink, but the tint underneath should stay longer. Uh, I think I looked at the like the there was one like shade that was described as a pinkish pinkish brownish shade. So maybe next time when I make a beauty bay order, I will just throw one of these in the cart and then I will will try out the formula because beauty bay is definitely one of those brands that occasionally when I do make a purchase from the website, I do actually like to 
like their in-house brand because usually their quality has been pretty good. But uh, these are already available. These are already available on their website. Just be aware that the shade range, as I said, it's pretty brown, brown leaning. So if you're looking for pink neutrals or bright reds, you won't be getting it with, getting it with these products. I think we filmed the, like the whole makeup news part at one go. But as I said, there wasn't like there wasn't a lot because this I was the as I said I was a bit off my filming schedule when filming the last one. Uh, I think from this week's releases we can say that my cheek product drawer is going to be like kicking and screaming and saying that why are you why are you f filling the drawers when you don't haven't even tried like the older products. However, I will like have a defense at this point that I've been uh, very good at trying the all sort of cheap products that I collected at the end of last year and didn't get to try them. So I am doing like my best at the moment to sort of see which products I want to stay. So some products that I don't like, I will just like, I have been very good at decluttering them just immediately. And then of course, then I can buy also some new stuff in. But um, yeah, I think it's quite obvious that even though there was quite a lot of cheap products that I seem to be wanting to buy, I can't obviously buy them all. So I will like in real life, because as I, I have only like a limited makeup budget, to dedicate monthly, I will some products I will end up buying and some products I will just like make the conclusion that yeah it's nice but it's just uh, I, there's something that I want more. But uh, comment down below what what did you think about the new makeup announcements that have been made and is there some products that you're planning to buy or is it all just has it been dull or boring to you? If you like this video then push the like button, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell button if you want to get notifications for my future content. You can also find me with the same nickname Makeup Hedgehog on Instagram. I hope I will be seeing you in another video soon. Bye bye!